Hello all you huggable people, I am Joseph the Huggist and today I'm playing Zen Pinball 2, the Excalibur table. Mainly as a way to talk about the Hellboy movie. I've seen the two live action movies before and the two animated movies. Blood and Iron and Sword of Storms, and I've really liked all of them so far. I really don't have a complaint with any of them until now. This this newest Hellboy movie is a hot mess. I got an email from Fandango from Fandango earlier this week telling me that Hellboy was coming out, which is always a good sign when the first first time you know a movie's coming out is when Fan, Fandango or any ticket service emails you to let you know. The promotional material for this movie was kind of lacking. The I go to the movies quite often. I've seen one movie poster for it. And I have seen no trailers for it. I didn't decide to watch the trailer until a half an hour before the movie. A half an hour before the movie started. And the trailer was fine. It was nothing spectacular. But the movie... It's a mess. It is not a very good movie. Everything about it is kind of awful. Well, not everything, but we'll get into it. So, let's start out with actors. And David Harbour played Hellboy. And he was... He looked great as Hellboy. He has... From all his times in Stranger Things, his, we, I believe he could have done better with that part. They, they rolled him too funny. The entire movie, Hellboy was telling jokes, and he felt like the angsty team. He didn't, he, it, when I say there was a joke about every part of the movie, Almost the entire movie was. It's more of a comedy. Which sucks. Because I don't think... I am don't read the comics, so I don't know if Hellboy's funny in the comics. But he surely was not funny in this movie. The entire time I laughed at one joke... There was, in a room of... That capacity about 120. There was maybe 20-30 people there. No one was laughing. And if it was, I don't remember. He was... It was... Alright. It was pretty awful. The... When I think of Hellboy, I don't think of him as a queen. I think of him as a... Badass. As... He can... Like, a one... A one-liner here and there is fine. But not a one-liner every time you see him. The the actor who played his father, Ian Machine, Professor Wu, he, he was all right. He, he's a good actor and I mean, he didn't do bad in the role. It just wasn't a very good movie. He he didn't seem like a loving father. He seemed he seemed too angry. There are some moments where he's where it's like he took him in because he saw something, but most of the time it's he's just he's just an asshole. The uh, there are two I'm gonna call them team members with Hellboy. And I don't know either of their names. 
I don't know any either of the actress actors' names. I'm not gonna look it up because I don't really care. It wasn't that good of a movie. There was one who can talk to spirits, and she she is she's all right. She's she does occasionally tell a joke, but she also gets very serious when when she needs to. I have no problems with that character at all. No problems with the actress that played it. The other character is a military, a bland military man who's basically seen some paranormal shit and now is judgmental of Hellboy. And he has a secret which we find out, spoiler alert, he can turn into a... I believe that is a jaguar? He can turn into a jaguar. And... I'm struggling to find the words. He can turn into a jaguar and is uncontrollable until he sells, sees Hellboy, and then all of a sudden he can kind of focus it against evil. Which... It makes no sense to me. But... The movie does pick up when he when the when he's actually the Jaguar. The final actor actress I want to talk about is the actress that plays the Blood Queen. And the whole Blood Queen part is I get it, she it I get what her motivation is, revenge and trying to basically save her people. Who really isn't her people because she's a she's a human, but are humans witches? I don't know. She she's all right. She, there's really nothing to say good about it. It was just sort of ah, eh, no, not nothing interesting. She really they although. She really didn't show anger like I thought she would. She was in a box. They cut her up in, into nine pieces, I believe they said, and put her in a box for centuries. And she finally is reconnected, and she doesn't seem all that angry. She just seems indifferent. Like, no emotional behind the performance. The, the biggest problem I have with the movie is, is ironically the very first scene when they brought King Arthur into this. And I, like I said, I've never read the comics. I don't know if Hellboy is connected to King Arthur, but... They gave him Excalibur and stuff, and it was putting a hat on a hat. If you outside wearing one hat, you'll be fine. You you might make it look good. You might make it look bad. But if you put another hat on that hat, you're fucking stupid. And that's exactly what they did with this movie. They gave Hellboy in itself is a cool character. He he already has a badass weapon with the six shooter he doesn't need another hat and that's exactly what they gave him and it made me disinterested in the movie the the very beginning of the movie it starts out with narration and it doesn't need to be narration and they also have dialogue so the narrator who is the actor who's playing Hellboy's father is saying shit like no ordinary human weapon could kill the blood queen only a weapon with magical properties and they needed the sword of Excalibur and then King Arthur will bring out the sword of Excalibur and the blood queen will go it's Excalibur they didn't need to do that it could have been narration or dialogue. Yeah. 
it didn't need to be both narration and title. It's again putting a head on a fucking head. It's stupid. I'm getting way angrier than I thought I would. Be. So the the there are there's some positives to this movie. As in some, I mean, two scenes. There are two positive scenes in this movie. The scene where Hellboy versus the three giants. It's a very, it's a kick-ass action scene. It's not worth price of admission for a ticket to see it, but it's a kick-ass action scene. He, the, right before that, the Osiris Club invites him out there to hunt these giants. And under Frost Princesses, they only hunted him, invited him out there to kill him and ambush him. But if you were going to do that, you don't invite him out there for a real scenario. You invite him over there for the fake scenario. So the as they're focused on killing Hellboy, who's done nothing wrong at this point, who's helped humans fight demons, and they're judging him on an action that he may or may not commit, they try to kill him. And they all get slaughtered by these three giants because they're wasting their fucking time on something that may or may not happen. This movie made me way angrier than I thought it would. Thought it did. So back to the back to the scene. Hellboy vs. the three giants. It's pretty a pretty well shot scene. It has, from what I remember, I was kind of checked out at this point. It had, and this was a half an hour into the movie, I was already checked out. It had, it wasn't shot like Transformers movies where a shaky cam and stuff. You could, you could see what was going on. And I really liked that scene, for what it's worth. The other other highlight of the movie for me was the this the last action scene of the movie where they're fighting this other society and paranormal society and all three of them are finally a team where the Jaguar's there, the spirit lady's there, and Hellboy and they're fighting them and it's a pretty cool action scene it's a continuous shot and at the end of the movie they find Abraham and it's like setting up for a sequel that's most likely never gonna happen because this movie's probably gonna bomb at the box office there are there's another scene in the movie where they're back in the 40s and they're at Hellboy's birth and all these characters that you know from if if you read the comics I'm sure you know them better I recognize some of them from the first two live action movies and I, I was looking at I was like I'd rather be watching those movies probably gonna watch the original live action Hellboy movie as soon as it's done but the Characters, you know this, and then there's this super this Nazi hunter, the Claw, who I can't remember who he's played, played by, but I know I've seen him in a lot of things before, and he feels like that whole scene feels like a movie out of Batman Forever. It was so cheesy, so, oh so cheesy. The, and I only bring it up because there are two uncredited scenes in the movie. One of them is the, uh, the uh, spirit of the claw coming to cheer up Hellboy and tell him to get basically get his head back in the game. Which, for Hellboy is such a fucking loser in this movie. He, uh... He's so depressed and whiny that he loses all his coolness. 
Hellboy is a badass. He doesn't need a ghost to to come into your mind. And I'm not sure if that's how it is in the comics, but if it is, I don't think I'll ever pick up a Hellboy comic. The other end credit scene is this hag talking to a character I don't know, and it's clearly setting up for a sequel. I sincerely hope they never get a sequel to this movie because I don't want to waste any more seeing it because I know it's, it's Hellboy, I'll probably go give it a chance, and I'm sad I gave this one a chance. Yeah, this movie was a hot mess of a movie. Not much good to say about it. It's mediocre at best. On the scale of 1 to 10, what would I give it? I would give it a 4 out of 10, which is not very good. On a scale of 1 to 5, how much, how likely am I to recommend it to someone? I am recommending a 0. And with all that being said, I don't have anything more to add to it, so hug you later. Um, don't waste your money or time at the show seeing Hellboy. Peace out.